Boris Johnson, when he was Foreign Secretary, went to uh, parties in Italy uh, as the guest of Alexander Lebedev, and then later on uh, promotes Alexander Lebedev's son, Eugeny, to the House of Lords against the advice of the security services. Surely it gives some evidence that he may well have been compromised. Could you just confirm, and I just appreciate a yes or a no, that you met with the former KGB officer, Alexandra Lebanov, uh, Lebedev, when you were Foreign Secretary without officials on the 28th of April 2018? Well, uh, I, I, I'd, have to, I, I'd have to check, but... Uh, well, that's, Are you having that, a lapse of memory again? That, no, but that's uh, but you know if you're, you're asking me a very specific question about a very specific date, and I, really, I, 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 I would have to, yeah. I'd have to get back. I certainly have met the gentleman in question, who's, uh, who's, uh, who, who used to be the proprietor of the London Evening Standard. I when I was, uh, when I was mayor of London. So I, 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 I certainly am not going to deny having met. Uh, Alexander Lebedev, I, I certainly have. As far as I remember, uh, he used to own uh, the London Evening Standard. Yes, but with officials, when you were Foreign Secretary, did you meet with officials or without officials? Look, I, I, I've certainly met him without officials. Right. Prime Minister, I mean, you said you met him without officials. Was that presumably was when you were Mayor of London? When you were Foreign Secretary, did you meet Alexander Lebedev? I, I, I think uh, I probably officials? did, but I but um, probably did. I, I, as I said, I would like, I would need to check. You, you used to regularly meeting him. I mean, is it probably because you meet him often, or probably because you can't remember? I, I've I've met him on a very few occasions. As Foreign uh, when, Secretary, when, when, when uh, if the, uh, on the occasion you're mentioning, if that was when I was Foreign Secretary, then yes. Without officials. Yes, I mean, that, that makes sense. Did you report yes. to your officials that you had met him? Uh, I think I. I think I did mention it, yes. And where did you meet him? Um, you know, uh, I, I met him uh, in Italy, as it happens, but I, I really, you know... I, I... An investigation by the Sunday Times found that on the 17th of March 2020, British intelligence warned the House of the Lord's Appointment Commission against granting a peerage to the Prime Minister's close friend, now the Lord Lebedev of Hampton and Siberia. The Commission concluded it could not support his nomination. 48 hours later, the Prime Minister visited Lebedev at his home in London. Details of that meeting have never been released to the public, and questions remain about whether the security services knew about this meeting or whether their assessments show that the Kremlin were keeping tabs on these activities. In July of 2020, Lebedev's appointment as peer was announced. So the question, Madam Deputy Speaker, is this. What changed between the security warning and the appointment? The British public have a right to know if and how an individual of apparent concern to our intelligence services was granted a seat at the heart of Parliament by personal order of the Prime Minister. Lebedev's father and business partner is a former KGB spy turned billionaire oligarch who continues to fill his coffers with investments in occupied Crimea and in Russian munitions. We've heard worrying reports about the existence of a private back channel between our Prime Minister and President Putin, facilitated by Lebedev. The Prime Minister seems to be more interested in attending parties with Russian billionaire mates than listening to the concerns of the British security services. I'd suggest we look no further than what's revealed in the Intelligence and Security Committee of Parliament's Russia report, which warned that there was credible open source evidence of attempted Russian interference in UK elections. It painted a picture of how Russian state influence in the UK is the new normal, with deep links between the Russian elite and UK politics and that, crucially, the intelligence community had, in its words, taken its eye off the ball on Russia. And it gives me no pleasure to observe that the Prime Minister is personally responsible for delaying, suppressing and then failing to investigate the Russia report. MPs, including myself, are now having to resort to the courts for a second time to try to get the Prime Minister to finally investigate. We are now going to the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg, this curious lack of interest in evidence of Russian state interference in our electoral processes is frankly extraordinary and stands in stark contrast to investigations undertaken in the US. 
And then the violence. As the news about Ukraine darkens even further, increasingly we think the unthinkable. Would Putin, for example, use chemical weapons? And the answer has to be yes, because he's already done it here on UK soil in 2018. The Salisbury nerve agent attack was part of Putin's long-term strategy, message and hybrid warfare. The amount of nerve agent found in the bottle that was used against the Skripals and which killed Dawn Sturgis was enough to kill several thousand people. Putin wanted us to know that he is prepared to use any weapon. And when he sent a weapons-grade nerve agent to Salisbury, that was a military operation and seen as an attack on NATO. Now, as a result, there was far-reaching international cooperation, including sanctions. And our then Foreign Secretary and now Prime Minister met NATO foreign ministers in Brussels for a crucial, highly sensitive meeting about Russia in the wake of that chemical attack on UK soil. But what we have since learned is the shocking news that immediately following that meeting, the Foreign Secretary ditched his security and travelled directly to the Italian villa of Evgeny Lebedev, the person with the life period who is now under so much scrutiny, the person who, as long ago as a decade ago, Sir John Sawyers, as head of MI6, was making clear was not deemed a suitable person to meet. And whilst he was there, the Prime Minister also met Evgeny's father, ex-KGB agent and oligarch Alexander Lebedev. Now, this raises crucial questions. Did the then Foreign Secretary inform the Prime Minister, the FCO and the security services, that he was going to fly from the NATO summit to meet an ex-KGB agent? And if so, why was he travelling alone without his security detail? Did he take classified documents with him? Did he inform the Prime Minister, the security services, about the meeting after the trip? Was he debriefed? Did he provide a list of contacts? Let me be very clear. Salisbury was the first use of a chemical weapon in Europe since World War II. It was an attack on NATO soil. And as the minister responsible for overseeing the British response, our now Prime Minister went straight from a classified meeting with the NATO Secretary General and Alliance partners to meet with a trained Russian intelligence officer. That is surely a security breach of the highest possible order. And that is why investigating this, investigating the Russia report, and indeed every part of Putin's arsenal is so very urgent. I say this not to score points. I say it because undermining democracy in the US and Europe has been part of Putin's strategy to divide and confuse the world as he prepared to attack Ukraine. We must be thorough. When the people of Ukraine are dodging bombs and bullets, we should not be dodging the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.